Hey everybody, do you remember that time when I was 17 and I had an autoimmune disease and I had to have a splenectomy because of my autoimmune, autoimmune disease and then I had three spleens? Okay, so the three spleens part is true, but it's actually not have to do anything with what I have to tell you, which is I have an autoimmune disease and then that splenectomy, like your spleen actually helps you fight um, getting sick. But I don't have a spleen because I took all three of them out. Um, and again, nobody ever said anything like, hmm, I wonder if the Santa Susana Field Lab has anything to do with the fact that you have three spleens, because this was when I was 17, and nobody was talking about the Santa Susana Field Lab at all back then. <laughs> Anyhow, but without a spleen and with my autoimmune disease, I get sick really easy. So this is me being sick for almost two weeks straight, which is typically how I spend my winters uh, sick. Nevertheless, we have work to do. And so this is just a quick message to let you know that I know we're busy. I know it's the holidays. I know we're sick. I know our government is in transition between the people we just elected, um, some going out, some coming in, but we need your help right now. I want to explain the PEIR, the Programmatic Environmental Impact Report. So this was, um, there's all these different documents that they have to do for a cleanup. A lot of them are called PEIS or EIS or PEIR, blah, blah, blah too many acronyms, but essentially what it is, it's kind of like the guidebook of how this cleanup is going to get done. And we have original agreements back in 2007 and 2010 that dictate how this cleanup can be done, right? These agreements said that they were going to be health protective. The 2007 cleanup originally said that it would be to a, um, a residential with garden. That means clean enough to where you could actually grow a garden living on the Santa Susana Field Lab and eat the produce that you grew there and not get cancer from it. Um, it's pretty radical cleanup. I mean, it's it's not even common, um, which it should be. It's America. We're capable of doing them. It's just they're expensive, so they're not often done. And even though no one will probably ever live at the Santa Susana Field Lab, it's a protective enough cleanup so that way all that soil that migrates through the dust and, you know, when it, there's fires through the ash and the smoke and every time it rains and it's running that rain off, uh, rain runoff, taking that soil down into our communities. Well, if they do a residential with back, uh, I'm sorry, residential with garden cleanup, there won't be any contamination to run into our community anymore, making us ill with things like autoimmune diseases that end up giving you splenectomies. Um, so so that was the 2007. The 2010 agreement, we often call it the AOC um, agreement on consent, is a background cleanup. Also, not commonly done in America. Background means that they clean up all the contamination, which just seems so obvious, right? Like if you spill radioactive waste all over the ground, you should clean up all that radioactive waste. If you spill toxic metals um, or if you you um, talk, so toxic metals, actually, even things like iron and lead, um, they can, if they're burned, they can adhere to, to particles in the air and they can actually get airborne. I didn't know that until recently. So we have a lot of lead contamination. We have a lot of toxic chemicals called forever chemicals, um, all, all kinds of really gnarly, nasty chemicals up at the Santa Susana Field Lab, along with the toxic metals and with the radioactive waste, right? Because we know that for decades, the site was used for over 30,000 rocket engine tests. They did um, experimental radioactive work, and they also did um, a lot of experimental uh, heavy metals work. So the 2010 agreement was to background, meaning that there's like this natural level of radiation that exists naturally. If you have a granite countertop, it might actually be slightly radioactive. If you have a um, fire alarm in your house, slightly radioactive, right? It's kind of outrageous, but these are really, 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 really low levels of radiation. Um, naturally, existing could even be a little bit more than that. And, and those are things where you hear about like radon. Um, sometimes there's natural uranium. These things that exist naturally are not as dangerous because they haven't been modified. And then once humans take them and modify them, um, the isotopes of these uh, radioactive elements become very, very dangerous. Like we know with plutonium-239, which exists at the Santa Susana Field Lab, has a 24,000-year half-life. So every 24,000 years, half of it 
becomes a daughter product, which doesn't even mean that it's not dangerous. It just means that it's not as dangerous. It's the daughter product. Um, it's still, I think uh, Dr. Dodge from PSRLA once calculated that uh, plutonium-239 has a 500,000-year danger life. So that's a really long time. All that to say is that a background cleanup is really important because it removes all that contamination, all the types, and it makes it so that way it goes to what is naturally existing, that background level. So whatever is background is natural. So anything that is man-made is removed and remediated and cleaned up and taken to licensed waste sites. Anything that is naturally existing stays, which sounds really fair, right? Apparently that's hard to do at some places to get that background reading, but we've already, that study's already been done. So the cleanup was supposed to happen in 2017 for the 2007 and the 2010, both agreed that by 2017, they would be done with those really, really rigorous health protective cleanups. It's now 2022, almost 2023, and neither of those have happened. In fact, Boeing and the DTSC um, signed agreements earlier this year called the settlement agreement, which is like an erroneous legal term. It's not really a settlement agreement because a judge would have to rule. The judge didn't rule. It was done behind closed doors and it was done without public input, without environmental review. That's why we're suing them for it because it, it violated a bunch of environmental laws called CEQA. And um, so those cleanups didn't happen. And this new settlement agreement is going to leave almost all the contamination behind, all of Boeing's contamination. Why am I telling you all this? So let's get back to the PEIR, right? So that cleanup document, it's been in draft for five years, which by the way, it's not supposed to take five years to go from a, a final draft PEIR to the final. That's just the way they like to do things here at the DTSC. They kick the ball down the field forever or until they have a winning advantage, which apparently they must because they're going to release the final. We think the final. Um, probably between Christmas and New Year this year, which we all know is their favorite time to release really, uh, really horrible documents that they think the public is going to be too busy to care about. So this PEIR will have um, taken into account this new settlement agreement, meaning they're going to let Boeing leave up to 95% of the contaminated soil on site. Then we have the Department of Energy will have their cleanup as part of this PER and NASA. So we've got all three, that's my husband, sorry to him, um, all three parties are have cleanup, um, like, like the way their cleanup is going to happen, is going to be part of this PEIR, Programmatic Environmental Impact Report. We're assuming that because Boeing got out of their rigorous health standard cleanup that was supposed to be to residential with garden. The settlement agreement completely destroys that. Once you get into the numbers, you realize it's it's horrible cleanup. Um, we're expecting to see the same kind of agreement happening for NASA and Department of Energy because, of course, why wouldn't they? The DTSC doesn't like to fight. They like to roll over and have their tummies scratched by the polluters. Um, so the reason why we're making a push right now for the community um, we need you to email all your elected officials. Not all of them. Oops, I'm sorry. I have to pick up my kids here in a second. That's my reminder. Um, yeah, this is as live as live gets, I guess. Um, the the elected officials, mostly your county supervisors. Um, if you follow that link that I have down in the comments, we list them out for you. There's all their email addresses. If you live in L.A. County, there's a few additional city council members and the city attorney that we're hoping you'll reach out to. The email text is all there. You just fill in your name, fill in your city, and, and you know what you want to protect from the most rigorous cleanup. Because um, the city of LA, the county of LA, and the county of Ventura have already set, a, um, set up legal precedent for a lawsuit to happen if this PEIR comes out and it, and it gets rid of those original cleanups, if it doesn't meet the background standard. And um, it's not likely to. We know the DTSC, if they already made this huge deal with Boeing to get Boeing whatever they wanted, it's going to happen with DOE and NASA. This PEIR is not going to protect the community. I, I mean, I'll, I'll eat, I will eat my shoe if it does. And I'm not worried about making that statement because, you know, DTSC has not 
not only not protected our community, they are not protecting communities across California. And we've seen that time and time again. So um, that's why we need you right now to copy and paste. It's all there for you. Uh, email some of those elected officials, only only yours. So there should only be one or two, maybe. It should take you about one minute, way faster than what it took you to watch this video. And just remind them that there's already a, a precedent there. We're not, we're not even asking them to do something that they don't know about. We're just asking them to stay alert this holiday season in a time when there's a lot of government transition. So that way they're ready. Because if this PER IR comes out, it's a possibility that we might only have 30 days for the city um, and the counties to sue the DTSC. And we need them to sue. We most likely need them to sue. So that's why this matters. So that's why it's, again, up to the public to save the cleanup. And, um, and again, I know, I know it's so busy. I know we're sick. I know so much is happening. But this is, this is what we do to protect our kids um, from incredibly dangerous uh, toxic metals, forever chemicals, and radioactive waste. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, email us at SantaSusannaCampaign at gmail.com.